sometimes dealing with infinite uh, concepts can be a little hard to wrap your brain around. So we're going to start with just a concrete example here. Um, so suppose I had a, a one kilogram gold brick and I gave it away to the top ma half of it away to the top math student every week. If I wanted to write a geometric series for what that would look like, I've given away half a kilo in the first week, but now I only have a half kilo left. So I can give half of that away, which is a quarter, then half away again, which is an eighth, and I keep giving half away. So clearly you want to be the first student, right, because you, you get the most gold. But um, I'm going to keep giving away half at a time. And if we ignore the physical side of this problem, which is, you know, we're eventually going to split atoms, and you ask, will I ever run out of gold? The answer is going to be no, because... Ignoring the physical side, whatever's left in my hand, I'll just cut it in half. Something's now left over, cut it in half again. And I just keep cutting it in half and cutting it in half. So if I keep handing out these halves, how much am I going to end up giving away if I do this forever and ever and ever? So you might say to yourself, well, you certainly can't give away more than what you started with. And if you keep doing this, in fact, um, you are going to end up giving away that whole brick if you did it forever. So hopefully that gives you some sort of intuition about how I can keep adding a number um, for an infinite amount, like adding up forever and ever and ever, and it comes to a finite number like one kilogram. So we're going to look at how the uh, algebra affects the formula just so you can make sense of our newest formula. So here's the one that we, we were working with for geometric series. And we're going to take a look now, what about numbers like between negative 1 and 1. So I'm going to use 0 0.1 as my example. If I want to get very large numbers, let's see what happens. And let's just say this time that I went, you know, we'll pick some giant number. Um, what do you think is going to happen now? Well, maybe you've noticed the pattern. I start at point 0.1, and now I shift over, and I keep shifting over and shifting over. So as I'm doing this, it's getting closer and closer to about 0. Right? The bigger that exponent is, the smaller that common ratio becomes, until eventually it's just about like 0. That's why when we add it up forever, it actually gives us a number, because eventually what we're adding is no longer um, significant. All the way to infinity, it's, it's going to be gone. So if it goes to 0, that means in the formula, this would be gone. So that's why I can update my formula now for an infinite series to look like this. And that gives us the new infinite series formula. But you have to be careful, because it doesn't quite work that way all the time. Um, for example, if the common ratio is too big, and I was to change this situation and say I'm going to give away one kilogram of gold in the first week, two kilograms in the next, four, then eight kilograms, and I kept giving away double the gold, this time my common ratio is two. And you should say to yourself, if you did this forever, Mr. Joyce, you'd be broke in a hurry because it's getting so big that there's going to be a massive amount of gold, right? I mean, by the time I get up, I probably would have to, you know, I'm sure I would be broke long before. I'd be broke somewhere in here. <laughs> but anyways, um, the point is, as I keep adding, this is getting larger and larger and larger. It's going to be huge. So big, in fact, that as we become infinite, very large numbers of n, so does this sum. So we say that there is no sum. It does not converge. Meaning, there is no number that it adds up to. It's infinite. Sorry, I'll call that no finite sum. Now, the reason you have to be careful about it to recognize that if R is um, for very large numbers, like if it's, uh, oops, there's a typo there. That should be greater than or equal and less than or equal. Um, the reason that you have to be careful is if you were to just blindly plug this into our new formula, here the common ratio is 2. And the first term is 1. So I actually end up getting a number out of this sum, but it doesn't make any sense. 
So if you're on autopilot, and it won't always turn out to be negative, like sometimes it could actually be a positive that you're looking at. It, it may make some intuition sense, you know, the number. It may not be outrageously wrong like this one, but the point is the formula is still going to work. It's just that the formula is not correct. So this formula only works when you're in this range here. Okay, so make sure that you have that in your notes, that this has to be true or that some formula does not work. So if we wanted to verify the gold brick, the first term was a half. That's what I gave away in the first week. And the common ratio is a half each time. So if I did it forever and ever, that'd be one, like the one kilogram I started with. Sort of what we talked about, but just that the math does match up with our intuition about that. Okay, so now I'm looking at these geometric series, wondering which ones have a sum, and if they do, what's the value? So you can determine that by finding the common ratio. So here the common ratio is a third. That means it does have a sum. So they can apply the term formula, the first number, divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So in this case, it would be 3 halves. Okay, looking at the next one, the common ratio, any term divided by the previous, is negative 2. So in this instance, there is no uh, sum. Okay. So we don't need to, to apply the formula, we just state it. And then finally, in the last example, so any term divided by the previous, common ratio is negative 1 third, this is going to be fine. I'll end up with 6 over 1 plus a third, which is 6 over 4 thirds, um, or 18 over 4, 9 over 2. Okay. Um, if it's possible, try to answer as a fraction for your, your work in this unit. Um, if your calculator gave you 4.5, that's not incorrect, but um, the fractions are generally how you're going to see it as well in your textbook. So you may have a button that looks like this, something, you know, fraction to decimal. Let me know. I'll try and help you find it if you don't know exactly which one uh, you need to convert between fractions and decimals. Okay, so aside from recognizing when it has a sum and being able to find it, you may have to, have to rearrange the formula. So this time, if I look at the pieces... It tells me the sum of the infinite series is 63, and the first term is 21, and I want to find the common ratio. So I'm just going to substitute in those values. Okay. All right, so now if I um, try to rearrange my formula here, I'll multiply by 1 minus r on both sides. Then I'll have um, 63, 1 minus r is 21. And if I divide by 63, oops. So 1 minus r, 21 over 63, it would be easier if we, t if we thought of that as 1 third. So I'll reduce that fraction. So I can keep rearranging here. Maybe you can already see what the common ratio is. But um, if I move r to the other side and one-third to the other side, I'm going to have minus one-third and r. So the common ratio here would have been two-thirds. Okay, so again, we're going to rearrange the formula. Pen is sticking a bit. There we go. And this time we're looking for the first term. We have the common ratio and the sum. So 24 out of 7 is the first term divided by uh, 1 minus negative 3 quarters. So 24 out of 7 is A divided by um, 1 plus 3 quarters. That's like 4 quarters and 3 more. So 24 out of 7 is A over 
um, 7 over 4. Okay, so dividing by 7 on both sides, so I don't need them there. 24 is 4 A's, so A is 6 in this example. Okay, so here's something I've done this several times, many times over the years, and it always kind of makes me feel strange. You'll see um, what happens when we, we do this, but if I was to take the number 0 0.99999 going on and on and on forever and apply what we just learned, I could think of that as 0 0.9 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.009, and just keep moving the placeholder over until I added up the same number I started with. So that would give us an infinite geometric sequence, sorry, an infinite geometric series, where the first term is 0 0.9, and the common ratio is 0 0.1. So if I wanted to know then, what does this add up to? That sum is 0 0.9 over 1 minus 0 0.1, which is 1. So I always find that kind of strange that 0 0.99999 going on and on forever is the same thing as 1. Okay, so we'll work with some clues then and see what we can do to find an infinite sum. In this one, if I know that the first term is 81, oh, this pen is just brutal, and the third term is 1, I need to find an infinite sum. So what I'm missing is I don't know the common ratio. But I can use the information to figure that out. Term n is a r n minus 1. So if I'm looking at term 3, that's a r squared. I know that term 3 is 1. I know the first term is 81. So now I can solve this for the common ratio. So that means r is plus or minus 1 over um, Maybe I'll do the square root just so you can see where I got it from. Okay, so I have two possible answers for my common ratio, which is why it says two possible series. Okay. All right, so now I can use the formula. So for the first one, the first term is 81 over 1 minus 1 over 9. And the second sum is going to be the first term over 1 minus negative 1 over 9. So for this example, we'll just use the calculator. And I end up with uh, 91.125 or 91 and 1 eighth. And in the other example, I get uh, 72.9. Um, or we could answer like 70. 2 and 9 out of 10 if it was a fraction. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to practice here is um, what if instead we were to think about how do we get a series to converge? So when an infinite sum converges, what you know is that this must be true. So to make it converge, I have to make the common ratio fit between negative 1 and 1. So that's our starting point. Let's find the common ratio. It's any term divided by its previous. So for us, that's just 1 quarter x. So if the common ratio is 1 quarter x, I'm going to put it in there. And I'd rather not have a 1 quarter in my problem. I'm going to multiply everybody by 4 so that I have it just in terms of x. And that's going to give me that negative 4 is less than x is less than 4. So what that means then is provided that this is true, then I know that my common ratio will be between negative 1 and 1. 
So that'll satisfy the conditions, provided that x is non-zero. Because um, then, of course, you would just have 0, or sorry, you'd have 1, 0, 0, 0, and so on. So we don't want to do that. But um, as long as x was non-zero and it's between negative 4 and 4, whatever value you use, this will converge 